sponsors of Dave's Tackle Box. I messed that up quite well. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Okay, it's Dave's Tackle Box. It's Sunday, the 23rd of February 2014, and I'm testing out a new streaming provider and things are a little different so uh, i'll press the buttons more you know wrongly more often than normal which is saying something really uh next week uh in strasbourg a the european parliament is going to be voting on this thing that has been torturing us for the last 14 or 15 months the tobacco products directive so we're going to be having a little chat uh, about what's going to pan out there um and how we think that might go uh we're also going to take a look uh with the help of matt gluggles uh has uh done a, a video uh taking a look at the puritane the fontaine puritane electronic cigarettes which is the one they're going to start selling in boots from tomorrow i think it is uh we're going to look at all that stuff and plenty more right after the titles And there we go. Oh, I've clicked the wrong thing again. <laughs> right. Good evening, everybody. I d I've got, I'm tempted to just like cut it and start again, but but no, we can't do that because we're live. That's the problem well, with live. It's isn't live. It? We're live. Yeah. And look, hey, it's Sunday, right? Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm just gonna. <laughs> I'm watching the playback and it's some way behind, but uh, it is rather sharp, this HD, isn't it? And yes, ha had I realised how sharp it was, I perhaps would have had to shave. Perhaps. <laughs> uh, Dave, good yes, evening. Dave. Good evening, sir. How are you doing, aside from you and your stubble? I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm, uh, I'm regrouping. <laughs> how many how many minutes growth is that that's on your chin then? I don't know. Uh, it's a couple of days, isn't it? Ah, uh, you see. This, this is why I keep this the manly stubble there all the time. Makes yeah. life much much more sensible. Ah uh, well. Then. We're gonna be looking at what's coming up next week, aren't we? Mm, yes. Which is, let's be honest, I don't think anybody would claim to uh, that confidently predict exactly what format this vote is going to take, let alone the result. Um, I think what we can say, though, is if they don't split the vote, then there's only one way this is going to go. So That's let's backtrack a little and, uh, and, 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 and look at where we find ourselves. This whole TPD thing has been through all the different plenary sessions. It's been to, through the trialogue process with the EU Council. 80, Article 18 is still a disaster, uh, but there was, um, th th there was a story about Article 18 that kicked off during the week, wasn't there? I don't know whether you want to just touch on that. Something to do with... Uh, Clive Bates blogged a while ago, didn't he? Back in January, somebody pointed out to him that the thing contradicted itself so, to the point that you couldn't the name of the flavour of the e-liquid on the label. 
Yes. Because something in Article 12 contradicted it or something. It was it was all over everywhere. The, 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 bo the bottom line on it was, was that they didn't bother checking what the rest of the damn thing said and had forgotten to put in exemptions for certain sections because it doesn't make any sense to have a flavour without you've got the flavour on the label. It's completely pointless and would cause no end of confusion. And also, um, had they not caught it before it went into there, you couldn't have put the, um, the concentration of the nicotine on either. Clive blogged about all of this. And then on Friday, I think it was, um, somebody in Brussels got hold of your letter and panicked. Um, yes. Because... Yeah, well, I'll just tell you that from the point of view of somebody who had occasional internet access last week, right? <laughs> I saw this, this sort of breaking news that... Uh, and, and the message that, that, that I got from it was that after... The vote in the, the the commission vote, the envy committee vote. When was that? A few weeks ago. Yeah. Where yeah. they voted like overwhelmingly for Article 18 as part of the wider TPD. Yeah. That somehow they'd managed to change some of the text, you know, and 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 quite a significant, substantial change to the text. Uh, after it had been voted on. That's the message that I got. And, and, and I, if I understand right, that is technically true. But whereas I thought they'd effectively accidentally outlawed all flavourings, which wasn't the intention, that's not turned out to be the case, has it? That's, that's right. The immediate panic was that they'd outlawed, this change had outlawed flavourings. Um, and this, is, this has come from an, an insider in Brussels, in actually one of the uh, political parties over there, somebody does generally speak and know what they're doing. And they panicked, misread the wrong section, we think. And there was a, an email went out to certain people saying, they're banning flavours. So yours truly got it out there as quick as possible. And of course, it turned out to be a mistake. What they'd done, the trial of agreement, such as it is, should not be altered from trial without being voted on either by the Envy Committee and its advising committees, um, or by the, the, the whole plenary, the whole parliament. It, it, it's a substantive change. And what they've made is a substantive change. And it's, um, it, it's, it goes away from due process. Um, the process has fallen down. Well, yet again. I, I, I'm just going to interject there and say that that's not... not uh... That's not very common in this entire process, in our experience, is that because everything's been done exactly by the book, following the European treaties. Which book are you reading? Yeah, a fantasy book, I think. I, I, was, I, I was, mean, it's just another cock-up, isn't it, in a series of cock-ups. It, it would appear that they've managed, to, they've got the book out, they've seen what the rules are, and they've broken every last one of them, from what I can see. And um, there's been no impact assessment done on what was agreed in trialogue, which is substantive change to what, what the European Parliament agreed. Um, and unless the split and separate happens, then the European Parliament is not going to be given the opportunity to vote on the substantive changes that have been made in trialogue. Nor would they be allowed to vote on this substantive change that's happened since trialogue. The whole thing is a dog's dinner from start to finish. and and. Do you know what really bugs me? I tweeted this earlier on. The TPD, as it stands, and if there's any Lib Dem MEPs listening, listen. In fact, every MEP, listen. The TPD, as it stands, sets out to reduce smoking prevalence by 2% per annum over the next 10 years. 2% compounded over the next 10 years would give 28% reduction in smoking prevalence. If they leave e-cigs to flourish the way they have been, over the last 12 months there's been an 8% reduction in smoking prevalence purely and simply because of e-cigs. And to me, it's a no... And I'll just, point, just interject there as well, Dave. You know, that's 8% in the last 12 months. But this is in a market that is still growing rapidly if anything that rate is going to increase yeah exponentially 
I would expect to see that um, 2014, by the end of December 2014, I would expect to see between 12 and 18 percent cut in smoking prevalence, all by choice, all by the choice of people who decide they want to use DC. And that, to me, is absolutely key because I don't want the government telling me what, what I should and shouldn't be doing, but I'm damn sure I want the choice. Well, absolutely right. Absolutely right. I mean, the, the bottom line right is, you know, and I know I get shouted at for this, but I drink diet coke because I'm a fat lad and I'd rather not get any fatter and I get through an awful lot of coke. Drinky coke, not sniffy coke. <laughs> um, those days are long gone. Um, I was a lot thinner then. Can't really work out why. But anyway, yeah. So I've chosen to use diet coke as a form of harm reduction or risk reduction, reducing the risk of ending up being the size of the house in. And to me, that's my choice. But they're not making diet coke a medicine and they're not seeking to regulate it so strictly that I can only buy it in bloody 10 ml bottles um, and have to, have to use it in such a way that it can't be spilled. Because by the time you put half a bottle of brandy in a bottle of coke, you do tend to spill some. Well, that's true. That's true. And so, some of those alcohols that you can drink as well do a lot more damage to the... You know, if, if, if what it does to the varnish on the coffee tables or anything to go by anyway. Yeah. So, so, uh, <laughs> but, but it, yeah, it, I mean, that, 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 that Diet Coke analogy, uh, other soft drinks are available, of course, um, but we're talking about Diet Coke. <laughs> um, uh, right, I don't drink that stuff, right? And, and, and this is the point. I mean, so you could almost take the argument and flip it slightly as well, and I wouldn't want them ramming the fact that Diet Coke is better than um, a normal Coke. You know, I, I wouldn't want to see that anybody sort of uh, uh, trying to tell me, you know, t t taking normal Coke off the shelf as well. It, it really is about a, a, a choice as an adult, as far as I'm concerned. Well, well absolutely right. I mean, let, let's just take another case in point. Um, in this house, for a donkey's age, I had to have two uh, bottles of coffee. The what I would call full fat, fully caffeinated coffee. And then we had decaf for my daughter while she was carrying the brown. And my wife, in solidarity with my daughter, would drink decaf, and that's all she's drinking now, because she quite likes it. Right. Um, and that's fine. I'm not going to go down that route. I don't want to be decaffeinated in the same way that I don't want to be denicotinized. But if I could, I don't, I don't know where else you would get get caffeine from but the bottom line on it is it's people's choice as to how they progress things and how they move forward somebody it was midge dogs just said in chat probably two minutes ago for chat but fair, very very quickly for us um that if they voted against the tpd if they voted it out they would save more lives than if they vote for it as it currently stands there would be a vastly reduced number of people smoking by choice if we voted the TPD out. To me, it's a bloody no-brainer. Absolute no-brainer. And uh, that kind of sums up the whole process, doesn't it? Because on top of all the irregularities, let's see, that, that's a nice sort of word to use, isn't it? The irregularities uh, that, that, that we've seen as they've pushed this thing through something that vaguely resembles a process. Um, the, 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 they've also used they've misquoted uh, scientist, scientist reports not just misquoted they bloody lied about it well t did they lie that, that's one thing that we can't actually substantiate we can't prove that they lied we can well, prove that well, they said like... the opposite of what the scientists did but that could be because they're thick well, yes, but when we go back to, to, to Dr. Farsalinos, the guy that wrote it, and said, <laughs> we've read what you said and this is what you said. When he's In his opinion, back, incidentally. <laughs> it's, it's kind of, you know, hang on a minute, just a second. You're giving information here and the information tells you that 20 milligrams is not enough to be able to allow seasoned smokers to switch easily. And actually, you've just got to talk to Ash about this because the, the, the survey they did in the middle of last year, they were saying, um, and this came from Deborah Arnott, that two-thirds of people that tried e-cigs didn't stick with it. Right. And I said, well, I know why. 
And it's bloody obvious why. If you were smoking 40, 50, 60 a day, or even 30 a day, and you decide that you're going to go for something that looks like a tab, and it's 18 milligram or 12 milligram or whatever it happens to be, it's going to give you about as much satisfaction as going to watch a Liverpool Arsenal match. I'm told. I know nothing about football. It, it, it would, seriously, there's, it's just not going to work for you. So naturally, they're going to try it and go, uh, nah, I'll not bother. It's not as good as a tab. Absolutely right. And, and well, you know, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm struggling to think of a, 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 a good analogy. But, you know, I mean, <laughs> we know that these things are designed really to... Well, well, okay. Let, let's be honest about it. The manufacturers of these little cigar-like things, okay, they're trying to sell e-cigs, <laughs> okay. That's what they're trying to do, okay. Yeah. But we we have for a long time acknowledged the fact that it needs to be something like that to get some people interested in trying vaping. But we've only ever seen it as a sort of gateway to get in. You know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A viable e-cig. You know, to move on to a second and, and maybe even a third generation device. Well, yes. I mean, once, you, once you've got used to using something small and moving on to something larger, generally speaking, is much less difficult um, and much less uh, scary. I mean, let's let's be honest about it. I've been plenty of places where there's been vapors. I've been in, in bricks and mortar shop where, where there's been vapors. And they say something like that, the one through four. And generally speaking, the reaction is, bloody hell, what the hell is that? <laughs> that, that would be in some way. I've got to you, be honest. When I first saw one of those in the flesh, which was at Vape Fest, there was somebody selling them. And I picked the damn thing up. And my reaction was pretty much the same, actually. What the hell is that? Yes. And that I is- still wouldn't. <laughs> Digsby's juicer said he disagrees. He was 40 a day and he switched no problem to 11 milligram liquids. That's you, Digsby's juicers. And bear in mind, when I switched, I went with 11 milligram juicers. But that was because I could see the potential. Yeah. And because in the situation I was in, it allowed me to get some satisfaction while I was in places where I was not allowed to smoke traditional cigarettes. And because of the nature of my work at the time, that was 24-7 just about. It was only when I was at home or in my car that I could smoke a fat. Yeah. Um, but as soon as something better came along, 24 milligram and up over, I climbed on the bandwagon. The two-thirds of people that don't get away with these things don't get away with them and I've, I've asked folks, I've got friends who tried and didn't get away with it. Keith is one, believe it or not. When, when first we gave Keith his first acid, it was with 18 milligram juice because that was what it came with. Yeah. He, he didn't get away with it. Give him 36 milligram and 45 milligram, and he's as happy as the proverbial cochon dans la merde. He's, <laughs> he's getting away with it. That was French for our French viewers, or otherwise pig and shit. Um, He's happy as Larry, and and a thirty-six milligram it does the job for him. Um, I've got I, I could tell you a story, but if I started now, we wouldn't get the break until about twenty-two. Shall we take a break first? Then? Go on then. Just before we do that, I mean, I I I, I think you're spot on, right? I, I started with twenty-four milligram stuff. It was in the little e-light cigar-like thing. And I had to actually start putting juice of that. Cause I, so I already knew that 18 wasn't going to cut it because when I started sort of shopping around for something better, you know, uh, it was because 24 milligram wasn't cutting it for me. And and this is the entire point. Uh, the, the, the reason that I think that, that Article 18 is going to be the disaster that, that many of us think it will be is that 18 milligram is not enough. For many, many people. And I think when people are using 18 milligram uh, products, uh, you know, that, that that will be legal under the TPD and they go and buy one from the chemist or the supermarket or whatever, and they try on one, I think they're going to be in exactly the, the, the kind of people that Dave was just talking about. It's not going to cut it for them. It'll turn them off the idea. Let's take a break and then we'll come back and get that story, Dave. Okay.
sponsors of Dave's Tackle Box. And welcome back. Right, so just before we went into that break there, Dave, you were saying you needed some time to tell a little story. So yeah. tell just, us your little story, man. Just just before I do, Entropy72 said we need a cart or a duck that will let you use three times 18 milligrams at once. He has an idea. <laughs> he didn't. That would be very different. Yeah. Um, yesterday, my wife and I went into Sunderland. Do you want to all share it at once? Um, she, she wanted to get some more juice from a particular outlet, EC Wizard, in Sunderland. And she decided that we would park in Debenham's car park, which is a monthly story, because that leads into the bridges. And I fully expected that when we went into the bridges, we would find lots and lots of little barras flogging EC, because they do seem to proliferate everywhere with certain um, makes and models, shall we say. Anyway, cutting a long story short, we didn't find any barrels because apparently we've banned e-cigs in the bridges in Sunderland. Nobody bothered telling us that, so that didn't stop me from using mine as we were walking through, but we walked through fairly quickly. Anyway, as luck would have it, as we, as we came out, there is a little e-cig store beside the railway station in Sunderland, and we wandered in and got a wonderful welcome. Um, but one of the guys that was there, if, if you like, it's, it's, it's in two halves. There's a lady's um, accessories, you know, fur hats and jewellery and stuff like that. On the e side, and the guy that was running fur hats and jewellery side had said that he had difficulty in finding something that would satisfy. So he still had the odd roll. And I asked him what level of juice he was using. And it was either 12 or 18 milligrams. As luck would have it, I had some 54 and 36 with me in two separate devices. So I said, right, here's the thing. See whether, when you use this, you feel like you want to have a rolling. So we had a drag on the 54, <laughs> and um, it might have been a little bit on the strong side for him. But then he tried the sweet leaf tobacco with a little bit of caramel in it, 36. And that, he said, tasted to him exactly like a rollie. He didn't feel as though he wanted a light a rollie up after he'd been using it. Um, albeit, I mean, it, it was on, what was it on? It was it was on a straightforward um, 4.2 volt battery, so there was no wattage control or anything like that going on. He tried that and he said, right, that's it. And told the guy behind the counter, get us some 36, that's what I need. Got the name of it. That's where he needed to be. And that would have enabled him to make the switch completely. Um, and that's exactly where it's at. The fact of the matter is, as Dr. Farsalinos has pointed out, in order to get the same kind of effect, nicotine effect, as you would out of a tobacco cigarette, and bear in mind we're talking about beginners here, then the stronger e-liquid is what you need. And I have seen in chat that people have tried the 45 milligram Vipe, and although it doesn't last long enough, it does hit the spot. And that's that's pretty much the case. That's pretty much where things need to be. Perhaps 54 milligram in something like a, a scrap on top of an ITS 134 at 11 and a half watts is overkill. Um, I do that just because I like it. But when it comes to run-of-the-mill stuff, 36 milligram, and I've said this for an awful long time, that's where I would start somebody new 
on a decent generation two or generation three device. On generation yeah, yeah. four, it has to be 45 or 54 without a shadow of a doubt. But yeah. then everybody's mileage varies. And, and, and that, that's the key, isn't it? Everybody's different. Okay, it really is. Uh, and, and uh, you know, <laughs> just, just in case anybody by some strange chance hasn't uh, hasn't got the message the 36 milligram is not going to be an option right so the, the guy you were talking to right uh is going to continue with vaping now because the guy's going to get him some 36 milligram g's uh and if it, when he when he can't he'll presumably give up on the idea of vaping deep in, deep in spec has just said with 11 I would have to suck the whole day. And you yes. can compensate by the time of usage, and yes, you can. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, but absolutely right. Th there are other things in life to suck on. Oh, you can stop no, it. No, 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 you got to be things... really careful with that one. Yes, because... there are other things to do with your time than to be constantly <laughs> using an AC. And, and, you know, if, if I was using 11 now, trust me, this program would go on for two hours because I'd have to stop every 20 seconds yeah. for a long drag. And, and and that's that's the consequence of using too low strength juice, isn't it? Is is you you tend to overuse the thing, uh, bloody atomizer starts glowing like a light bulb, mm -hmm. uh, which spoils the taste of the juice. You're getting through batteries at an unmanageable amount. You know, I mean, this is not a new concept. And and I'd just like like to to to, to remind people as well that when British American Tobacco, uh, as CN Creative. Settled on 45 milligram. They didn't do that on a whim. They did that after a lot of market research, you know. Yeah. They went to smokers and they said, tell us what you think of this stuff. And 45 milligram was the magic number that they hit. Um, so CN Creative had actually done blood plasma studies as well. Indeed they have, yes, yes. Which, uh, despite what the uh, the Envy Committee would have you believe, isn't going to make us all mutate, is it? Apparently not. So... Oh, I'm all right. <laughs> other than for cheese double, we're both fine. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Right. Well, anyway, uh, the, the, on the subject of uh, these uh, uh, cigar-like devices, we mentioned uh, briefly last week that the, the story broke, didn't it? Uh, that uh, it was the uh, Royal Pharmaceutical Society were sort of having a little moan that Boots were about to start selling uh, uh, a product called the Puritan. And that it, it comes from a company called uh, Fontem Ventures, was it something like that? Fontem, yes. Fontem. Fontem Ventures, a subsidiary of Imperial Tobacco. That's the significant bit. They're part of Imperial Tobacco. They've come up with a product, uh, which I think is supposed to go onto the shelves in Boots starting tomorrow. Is it? It is, and I'm going to be there. I know uh, that's right. Yes, and we'll, we'll we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in just a moment. Uh, but uh, our sort of a friend of the show, Matt Gluggles, uh, managed to get his hands on some ahead of time, and uh, he was very kind uh, to send us a little video he did. Uh, you'll hear him stress during uh, this video that he doesn't consider it a full review, uh, but it's kind of like a first impressions and his initial thoughts of the. Fontem Adventures Puritan e -Sig. So you'll be able to buy this in boots as from tomorrow, allegedly. And, well, see what you think. We have to mute now, Dave. Okay. Hi, folks. Just having a quick go on... Uh, this, the Puritain, brand new e-cig, and it's had a lot of publicity in the last week. It's made by a company called Fontam Ventures, which is a subsidiary of uh, Imperial Tobacco, uh, and it's going to be rolled out via Boots the Chemist, and it's, it's a little bit interesting. This video is not a review of the Puritain. I've not had it long enough. This was, the one I've got is a sample that was sent to me uh, to try out and I've got it comes in two formats I've got them both there's the disposable puritane and this is the rechargeable puritane now the rechargeable obviously comes in a very familiar format um, you've got your automatic battery and your 
pre-filled cartilizer. Connect them together. And it looks to me like a proprietary thread, by the way, so that the, car the cartomizers are uh, specific to the battery. Um, and it appears to work like an automatic, a small automatic battery powered e -sync. What I'm going to do with this is use it for a little while longer. I'm going to come back and talk about a few things. See what we think. Right, so I've been puffing away on this for a little while now and getting a feel for the product. I have to say it does have a very nice flavour. Um, it's a tobacco flavour, which is what you'd expect, I suppose. Um, but as tobacco flavours go, it is a really nice one. Obviously, it's a, it is an e-cig. It performs, it works, it looks like an e-cig. It gives the vapour. It worked. Um, just to put one little thing into perspective, I'm going to do a quick size comparison. And this, I guess, is one of the main competitor products. It's the Vibe. Just compare the size of the Puritane to the Vibe. And as you can see, the Puritane is uh, much bigger. Uh, the liquid capacity for the Puritane is uh, a lot more, double, double the liquid capacity. The battery capacity, I'd say, is, is probably more than double the Vibe battery capacity. So whereas they've gone for the look of a cigarette, there's been a compromise there. They haven't gone the whole hog and made it the exact dimensions of a cigarette because obviously they've taken practical considerations into account. Uh, they, they want the cartomizers to last a little bit longer and the battery certainly will last a lot longer than a Vibe battery. However, the juice isn't as strong. Uh, the maximum strength of the e-liquid in this is 1.6%, uh, 16. Now, 16 milligrams per gram is the unit on the packet. My personal view is that that is not strong enough for uh, a lot of people. It's not strong enough for me, for example. Um, if it, for a product like this to work for me, it would have to be at, at least 2.4%, 2, 2 preferably 3.6%. But bear in mind, this is the first step for Fontam Ventures on what is going to turn out to be a very long journey for them. And it's the opening product, the first one. One of the points of difference with this product is that the cartomizers themselves are made in the UK. So Fontam are obviously going to stress that in terms of the um, assured quality of the product and that's backed up by the fact that it's going to be sold by Boots the Chemist that have a reputation um, which is extremely high. It's going to reassure people that are buying this product. Is it refillable? The answer is yes if you know how to refill a cartomizer. Um, the top cap of the cartomizer pops off very very easily and if you know how to refill a cartomizer it's quite simple to do. I've had one of these cartomizers apart now, had a good look inside. The 1.1 mil claim I'd say is is accurate, there's certainly enough uh, capacity there in the filler material to hold 1.1 mils. Um, the design of the carto it's, is a bottom coil, horizontal coil, it's basically what we used to call a Kanga style uh, carto. So it's just a simple bottom horizontal coil uh, with the whip going up into the filler material. And, and they work fine. And in fact, I find that those are uh, the best ones when, when it comes to refilling them. So to me, that's a plus point because I can put whatever juice I want in there now, now that I know how, to, how it works. Now, 
I said at the start of this video that this is not a review, which it isn't. I haven't had the product long enough to give it a full proper review and the, the real reason why I can't do a review of this product and certainly I can't judge it on is it any good or not is purely and simply because this product is not aimed at someone like me. I'm not part of the target market for this. I would guess that the target market would be people, smokers, uh, that have heard about e-cigs and want to give e-cigs a try for the very first time. And they want various reassurances about the product that they're trying. And that is the market that it's aimed at. And it will do very well at what it does. So, thanks very much to Matt uh, for uh, sending that along to us. Um, uh, uh, that's certainly my first view of the Puritain from Fontaine Ventures. You do know what Puritain is French for, don't you? Uh, not with that spelling, but... Uh... <laughs> Take me off. Puritan. Um, sorry? Puritan. Puritan, absolutely, yes, yes, yes. Uh, it, it's clearly it's supposed to. Uh, well, it's it's likely to be uh, some kind of a rival uh, name to uh, Eco Pure or something like that. Probably isn't it with the Vicar? Yeah. I would think. That's I would probably think so, where yes. they've gone. Um, I, I mean, okay, you, you're going to try and get your hands on one of these tomorrow, I believe. And um, I, I am. Yes, I'm going to go down to Boots because I am. I'm, reliably informed that you have to have an interview with the pharmacist i, I do you know what i, I just saw that somebody typed that into uh in, into chat why well i suppose they may want to assess what your needs are um and whether or not indeed an e-cig is going to be suitable for you they're going to be, i i, I hope but if they're going to ask any questions, the questions will be, do you wish to become nicotine abstinent or do you wish to reduce the risk? They're not, smoking? are they? They're not. <laughs> that, that, those aren't going to be the questions, are they? The questions well, are going they, to be, have you tried patches? Well, there might be that. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm going to have my iPhone in my top pocket set to record audio. <laughs> Whatever the question is, don't make your answer because I want to take it apart on vaping television later. That'd be my well, advice. I'll, I'll be I'll be absolutely honest, and I will tell them that I already use electronic cigarettes, and I want to try this one to see what all the fuss is about, to see what makes it so good that Boots want to stop it. Because it can't have anything to do with money. Uh, no, 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 absolutely not. Uh, you know, God no, God no. Um, the let's I'm be sorry, honest. I really, okay, I I've I have no plans to see one close up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you you will see one in the flesh, so to speak, tomorrow. Uh, but at 16 milligram, it's a complete waste of time, particularly that they've built it into something that resembles a baseball bat. Well, I, I was just I was looking at the video um, in in glorious high definition. I have to tell you, and I think I've seen that model before. Uh, so, I've got a few disposables which I can't actually get to at the moment uh that looked like very similar dimensions to that it, it looks like um i can't remember what it was called now i think it was the 102 um from oh lordy can't remember who it came from but it was about the same sort of size and it looked to have a similar sort of thread and it, it, it it's a thread that you don't see very often at all in fact, I haven't seen that thread in probably three years. Yeah, well, it was certainly a, a new one to, to Matt there, wasn't it? He, he thought yeah. it might be proprietary, uh, which, which it may be. Well, we'll know more tomorrow, I guess. We know more. But but I've got to be honest, I, I'm appalled that they think 16 milligram. I, I, I mean, <laughs> let's face it, it's one of these things, isn't it? You know, um, if you go t do this interview with the pharmacist, right? And uh, they eventually decide that, yes, this is the best option for you and uh, agree to take your money and give you one in return. Um, then they're going to have you persist with it, aren't they? <laughs> but, but but from 16 milligram, you've got nowhere to go. 
you, well, you, you can almost see a strategy forming here. And let, let's face it, they're going to sell tons of these in the first month. I would right. like to see them sell out of them very quickly. And, and I, I think they will. But the real question is how many people have come back for a second one? That's the real question, isn't it? Well, ideally, you know where I'm like for plotting and planning career stuff. Ideally, I would like people to go down and buy them. People that know what to do. Leave some for the beginners, but I wouldn't worry too much about that. And I would go down and then find a nice cuff, sit down and have a bit of a vape meat. Well, a nearly vape meat, an almost vape meat. And then go back in and say, yeah, that was all right, but it's lasted us two hours. Have you got anything better, please? And then whip out an ego with an iClear 16 or a, an iClear 30B or something like that on the top or an I, ITS 134 or something. Have you yeah. got anything that's a bit more like this that works a bit better than them, please? And let them, let's try and get the message across to them that what the stopping is, as it has been described in chat, um, as potentially... What was the word I was looking for? Oh, I shite. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that, that is one of the many technical uh, categories that we have for these things, shite. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and uh, well, you know, and hopefully it is shite rather than totally shite, you know. Um, I've got to, um, got to uh, sort of bring up, I've just been scouring, uh, right, I should say, um, that, that, that Matt has embedded that video uh, on his blog, which is Matt Gluggles dot blogspot.co.uk macbluggles.blogspot.co.uk uh it's a good blog it's worth it's worth uh, subscribing to uh, and keeping up with that blog um and i'm just looking to see if he's mentioned the price and i don't believe that he has because and the reason i was looking is because the speculation in chat that these things might be 25 quid I, that doesn't heard, sound right i've not heard that i, uh, I heard i heard less than that Right, a lot and less than that. It, it's a rechargeable. There's a rechargeable and a disposable. Yeah, I'm just looking. Uh, there's a picture. In fact, let, let, let's get this on screen. Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Uh, you can see here. This this is actually uh, MacLogal's blog, and you can see uh, the the article is entitled "The Puritan E-Cigarette" by Fonte Ventures, which is a good name for it. And what I'll do is I'll just make that a bit bigger so you can see that still picture there. Yeah, they've got a disposable and then they've got one of these things, one of these bubble packed things with one of those really naff USB chargers and a couple of cartos. And I've seen that package before. Uh, that's that's not new to me. So um, I shall have a look around and see where I've seen that before. I, I, I'm very, very sceptical. Uh, I, I'm hearing numbers like 23, 25, 28 pounds, which yeah, I presume would be for I've the... Seen uh, 20, 23 and 28 mentioned in chat. Well, we'll find out tomorrow, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, Neil's just checked. Neil Roth says he's just checked. It's 23 pounds for the rechargeable. There you go. Time. Well, I'll take one for the time. What the hell, I'll get one. That's disposable. Don't get trying to expense it. We're not wasting VTTV funds on tat. <laughs> oh, were you offering to pay? <laughs> and it will set up a PayPal account. <laughs> I was, was going to put it on the credit card and then ring it in stolen. With, with a, t a review tat button. <laughs> Donations for review tat. No, look, I, I mean, uh, it, I... If I were looking at this myself and I was going to do some kind of review of it, I would uh, do my best to have an open mind. I'm just very sceptical about this one. I'm, I'm, to be honest, I'm more interested in how they're selling it. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm more interested in what the, uh, what the banter and the chatter from the... Uh, the and it, it's relevant because, uh, you know, I don't think it's going to be as good as the Vibe, right? I, I, that, that's my feeling because of what they're putting in it. But as yes. Matt did point out, you could top it up with something stronger. But but I suppose the real issue here is this is something that's designed to survive the TPD revisions. Which the Vibe definitely won't because of the strength of the liquid in it. Well, none of the Vibes will, you're right. Time to take a break. Because we're late. We'll be back really? in a minute and a half-ish.
Cloud9 Vaping, sponsors of Dave's Tackle Box. Weber and iWeber Alexa, best in Yorkshire for your EC needs. That's iWeber.co.uk and iWeber-Alexa.co.uk. iWeber and iWeber-Alexa.co.uk are proud sponsors of VeberTrails.tv. Sponsors of Dave's Tackle Box. And welcome back. Right, yeah, so I was just uh, monitoring the chat there uh, as as the ads were playing. And uh, it, it looks as though uh, the... the uh, okay, so uh, Neil Roth is stating, uh, it's taken from a press release... The e-cigarette will cost $7.99 for a disposable version and $22.99 for the starter kit, which contains a battery, a charger, and two cartomizers. Jesus Christ. So, um, so I'm not sure what they'll be selling the uh, replacement cartos at. Um, but let's face it, that's not cheap, really, is it? Well, I, I, can, I can almost guarantee that the VIP stand in the galleries in Washington will do a hell of a lot of business when folks have gone into boots and found out how much one of these things is. And yeah. then they come out to the VIP stand and get a, a full ego set up for less than that. Which I'm pretty sure they will. You're right, uh, you can, can't you? I mean, uh, I mean, this, okay, this lacks juice. but And, and this one is one that uh, we were given at Irish Vape Fest, I think, which I've been waiting for a, a good cause to hand out. It's a clearer and an ego and, uh, and, a, and a better charger than the thing that they've packed. Um, and those things you get for 20 quid easy now can't you you should get a bit of change don't you no juice in there but... yeah um, the mentals ask does anybody know where the boot smoking cessation people will start recommending and pimping their e -cigs? that again is, is a very interesting question these are uh, things we need to know aren't they well this is this is why I want to go down there and I'm not going to video because I'll get thumped by the guards yeah depending on I'm, I'll find one to go to where they don't know who I am because the gallery is do. And I'll I'll just record it. No video or anything like that before anybody takes the mickey out the last time I tried to do anything like that. Um, and I'll just record what it is they've got to say. And I may not even play that back because you're supposed to tell folks when you're doing that. But yeah, it would be yeah. interesting to see how they sell them. And to me, to be honest... I still think that the worst easy is still better than the plastic tampon for anybody that's looking to um, get away from smoking with tobacco or without getting away from the use of nicotine. And I, I totally agree with you, Dave, and it, it hits on what we, what we touched on earlier, which is um, I don't think there are many people, well, so certainly there's nobody on the VTTV team, and I suspect that there's nobody in uh, the 160 people that are in that chat and whoever in the other chats and all the rest of it uh that, that would use a singer like um but they're still better than the alternatives if only because they serve as a gateway to something better yeah um, yes. my concern with with with, with a product like the puritan is that is the top of their range <laughs> yes there's nowhere but, to go but what boots did see it the guy I spoke to at the ESIG Summit did say that they were looking at Generation 2 and Generation 3 devices, and he was he, he, he sucked an awful lot of knowledge out of the brains of the people that were stood around the table. 
And we, we were all singing off the same hymn sheet and said, look, this is where you need to be. Generation born for Cedar Lakes, we're all right, but that's as far as they go. You need generation two and generation three in order to be able to satisfy. And he said, one step at a time. Yeah, you, you see, I, I would love, I would love to think that that's what would be coming next. I'm a little bit sceptical if it's the case, though, because once you get up to Generation Two devices, you're talking about buying liquid separate from the cartridge, and uh, I'm not sure whether an organisation like Boots would be brave enough to take that step. To be honest with you, you know, we're talking about a place that has been known to interrogate people for buying bottles of PG. VG, should I say? I was going to say VG. VG. Yeah. yeah, and the thing uh, is, at, at Lloyd's they've got them out on the shop floor. It boots them behind the counter. Yeah, and that, 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 I, I was in. Where was it? Tesco. Last weekend or the weekend before, and we were at the pharmacy counter, and I noticed they've got a couple of different brands there. Oh, yes. VZ. They all looked a bit like the Puritan there. Um, and uh, and again, they're behind the pharmacy counter, and I, I I wish they didn't. Do you know what I mean? I, I would agree. I think it's it's actually sending the wrong message, and it's it's about the width of a hair on the head of a nit on a nat's nut away from being medicinal. It is. That's it's almost as though they've made a conscious decision to make it a medical product. I mean, what 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 gets me though is why put it. I can understand they don't want it in with the smarties, okay? <laughs> you know, because people are guarded, regardless of what your views are on uh, on uh, on age limits. Uh, you know, for selling nicotine products to people, uh, I think I can I can understand any vendor not wanting to put them in with the crisps and the sweets, okay? Yes. But why not stick them on the end of the alcohol oil, for example, or even with the tobacco products? God forbid, you know. Where, well, instead, where a instead, smoker instead, buying their fags might think, actually, I'll give one of them a try. Rather instead, than being something where you have got to make a conscious decision, and I'm going to use the air quotes here to say, to quit, and then have to go and talk to your chemist about it. So, sorry, that's it, a rhetorical question, because I know you ain't going to argue with me. <laughs> the thing is, in, in Sainsbury's, for instance, I was there the other day doing the shopping as you do, all their, their cream shutters are all shuttered across the place, but we've got an open section where there's Whistlers at the top, yeah. it's Ronson at the bottom, and in between it was filled up with, I think, 10 Motives and E-Lights and a few others, and they were the only things on display at the cigarette counter. Okay, we, well, well, I'd give them some respect for that then, actually. Yes. And, and I must admit, so I, I have been in the Sainsbury's, but I didn't look that close recently when I went in uh, that, 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 that sits better with me you know uh, I kind of like the idea that Rizzlers have no purpose other than smoking and uh, okay you could argue that your Ronson lighter fluid and stuff uh, could be for something else other than lighting tobacco but uh, but let's be honest it's nice that, that, that they're, they're hiding the stuff that they're forced to hide but not everything yes and, and I do, I, li I like that, I wasn't aware of that, and, I, and I, I like the idea that they're not hiding the stuff behind the chemist counter. Yeah, Joseph, Joseph uh, Kerr um, in chat has said that he's absolutely certain in his mind that the UK will go medicinal by function. Um, and I think they'll try, I really do think they'll try. They will fail, however, because courts will prevent that from happening. The precedent has already been set, and in actual fact, they know they're not going to get away with it. I suspect that that won't, in the long run, happen. And actually, the fact that Boots has got them in and is selling them off-label or off-indication, if you like, it's a non-medicinal product that they're selling, will go a long way at stopping that from happening, exactly as it, it, it will do in Lloyd's and any of the pharmacies that pick these things up. Um, it's, it's an interesting concept and one that's going to take an awful lot of thought to work out what the ramifications of it all might be. Do, just out of interest, do, does anybody know, this is a question for chat and I know I'll need to wait a little while for the reply to come through, but are Lloyds insisting on talking to, to the pharmacist? Or did you just say that they're just on the shop floor? They're on the shop floor. Okay. 
you, they, well, when I say on the shop floor, they'll, they'll be on the shelf in front of the pharmacist because they're only little. Yeah, but they'll be, they'll yeah, because be, they're nickable, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but they are, they are on the shop floor in Lloyd's. Um, you can go and buy them net if you want. So there's no. It, it, it's a bit like uh, it's a bit like tampons and, and other lady products and cotton wool and all of that kind of stuff. You just go and shove it in your barrel, and when you get to the checkout, pay for it. Victory V's. Fisherman's Friends. Mm-hmm. Things like that. Yeah. Yes. They'll be banning sucking Fisherman's Friends in public next. That's what they already had. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, yes. OK, well, yeah, very interesting. Anyway, we're into the last couple of minutes here, and I really do want to kind of take us full circle to where we started this show and just, just uh, have, the, have the summing up on uh, on next week, which is, let's face it, We've been bleating about this TPD process since the 18th of December, was it the 8th of December 2012? And then all the way through 2013 and all of 2014 so far. If it goes the way that the Commission would like, the end of this process is next week. It's been all through their uh, their their sort of process of uh, nailing down the text and all the rest of it. And it ends up in front of all the MEPs in Strasbourg. We think on Wednesday, but we're not entirely sure, are we? It should be Wednesday. That's when it's tabled for. It may not occur, though. The probability is, if Martin Schultz, the uh, the uh, he's the president, isn't he? Is he the president? What's his title? He is, he is the president of the European Parliament. If he uh, uses his power to ask for Article 18 to be split and voted on separately, I think we're in with a good chance that this will be pushed out to be looked at properly whilst the rest of the TPD gets voted and goes on its merry way. Um, the likelihood is, I, I don't know, I don't get the fuzzy feeling about this. I've got a feeling that they're not going to split it and on Dave's Tackle Box next Sunday we'll be talking about a plan B uh, which is which is a little sad um, but you know there's going to be no moping about it uh, we're off the following week to Brussels uh, on the coach that Nicky Sinclair has organised and that will probably be the first action of the uh, of the plan B campaign which will be to make them think again yes um, Whatever happens next week, it ain't over. It really ain't over. It ain't over till I say it's over, and it ain't over. <laughs> um, Dave, thoughts? Well, the bottom line on it is, is, is very simple. If people sit on their backsides and do nothing, we've lost by default. Everybody needs to be emailing Martin Schultz and all of the group leaders, political group leaders. Even if you've already done it, do it again. Do it tonight, because the deadline apparently is 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. European time, which is three o'clock hours. Um, sorry, five o'clock hours. Um, email Martin Schultz and tell him that we want to split and separate. Don't. There's no need to go into any detail. No need for screeds. You know, 150 words will do. Just make his inbox overflow. But if it does all go pear-shaped on Wednesday, we have the chance to change the course of how things go in a number of different ways. There is a, an ECI, the EFVI, the European Free Vaping Initiative, yep. which needs a million signatures, and it needs them really in the next eight months. If it gets those signatures, then it can produce legislation into Parliament. There are various different hoops to jump through, but it can do that. Also, when this has gone through, if it goes through, there is nothing to say that they can't also decide to try for different legislation for ACs. And that is, I think, what the, the bus trip, Nicky Sinclair's bus trip, will be pushing for on March the 5th when they get to Brussels. Absolutely the start, right. The, the start point of new legislation specific to ACs, it needs to be done because they're not going to go away. They will keep on trying, so let's us try before they do. 
and let's us try and get sensible proportionate regulation that we can live with and that's the start of plan B is March the 5th if it all goes yeah. pear shipped on the 26th plan B starts on March the 5th with is trying to get new legislation drafted the whole thing recast so it's specific to e-cigs is removed from the TPD um, and all the evidence is on our side we are in the right we are the important people. We and every smoker that might at some point decide he wants to try or she wants to try ACs. We owe it not only to ourselves but to them as well. Absolutely That's right. Where it lies. Absolutely right, Dave. Beautifully summed up, if I may say so. Um I'm just gonna add one thought to that. And uh it's it's kind of a little blow. We, we're finally getting people, vapors, motivated. Uh, we've managed to get this on the agenda and into the media uh, through hard work and grafting. I, I wish I had a time machine <laughs> where I could arrange for this kind of... Uh, the, the voice that we're now seeing from vapors to be appearing a year ago, but we can't do that. Um, and... It's a shame in a lot of ways, but my message to close this show is if you don't speak up, they're going to walk all over you. It's that simple. You really must start getting active if you care about this. Um, we make a lot of noise, but we've only got one voice apiece. We need everybody's voices added to all of these initiatives. So do email Martin Schultz. Uh, I've emailed him twice so far. I got a reply back from uh, Martin Callanan uh, from the ECR group, and that's it. Nobody else has even acknowledged receipt. So I'm going to send another one, and I shall do that. We've got to what time is it tomorrow? I would say three o'clock at the latest to be sure to go. I shall do it on the train and time it right. <laughs> but we've got to go, we've overrun. Um, so I'd like to say to everybody, uh, well, first of all, I'd like to say, Dave, thank you very much for joining me again. No problem. Um, and to everybody else, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Good night. We'll see you next week.